Welcome to the Mirror of the World. I'm excited that you are able to join us today. My name is Buki Adeoshun. Before we start, I would like us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another opportunity to look into the mirror of your word. Lord, I ask you that you will show us what you want us to see in your word today. Lord, I ask that whatever we see in your word, you will write it in our heart and help us, Lord, to increase in the knowledge of you. Lord, increase our understanding of you. Lord, I pray that whatever we see in your word today, our lives will be transformed into it by the power of the Holy Spirit. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, today, by the grace of God, we are going to be starting another series. Uh, we've just finished the book of Psalm. We read uh, not the entire Psalm. That probably will take like the whole year because uh, we did a series on Psalm 119 and uh, that took us about six days or thereabout. Um, I want to encourage you to go and watch that video again. Mm. One of the verses that you know still remember very well, I believe it was verse 22 or 24, where he says that the word of the Lord, uh, or you can get counseling from the word of the Lord. I mean, simple things like that. A lot of us, I'm very sure that sometimes we don't even read the bible with a mind that we will get counseling from the bible i mean you just reading the bible and uh, with a mindset that you know you are sitting before someone to give you a counsel so don't forget that the bible is the word of god you know we were told that the word of god is our lord jesus christ so actually when you are reading the words of jesus you can put it this way that you are actually sitting in front of our lord jesus christ and you are getting counsel from him isn't that amazing uh i think it, verse 89 oh wow wow a, a scripture a very popular scripture say forever O oh lord your word is settled in heaven so and this is the thing that the lord showed me amazing so it's like um, God's word is not like our own words that we just release anyhow. No, God's word is kept in heaven. Um, that's why yeah, uh, there's a particular song that we normally sing and we will say, uh, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. No, uh, that song isn't totally correct. It's not according to the scripture. God said it and he said to. So uh, it's like God kept all those words in heaven. And when it is time for the word to be released, when the word of God is released into your heart, into your life, into my life, is released for a particular purpose. And as a matter of fact, the scripture says, God wash. He told Jeremiah, I said, Look, I wo I am watching over my word to perform it. The book of Isaiah chapter 55 told us, it says, so shall my word be, it shall not return to me void. So uh, look at that word, it shall not return to me void. It said, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. So that means that word was kept somewhere and that word is released and that word accomplished whatever it is sent to do. I pray today in the name of Jesus that the Lord will send a word to bring you out. The Lord will send a word to encourage you. The Lord will send a word to give you hope. The Lord will send a word to deliver you. The Lord will send a word to, to save you. The Lord will give you a word that will quicken your mortal body. Uh, that will rejuvenate your strength, your body, in the name of Jesus. The Lord will give you a word that will make you to sing and shout for joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Wow. So uh, we're going to be reading Esther chapter 1. And uh, I'll tell you something. 
an interesting story. We're going to be blessed today. So uh, without wasting time, I want to encourage you uh, to join me as we read that chapter. You know, we have captioned uh, the topic or the title of our discussion today. Don't give an occasion to the enemy to strike. You might be wondering, ah, look, <laughs> I've read Esther chapter one and uh, I can't really see that there. But don't worry. Uh, that's the way the, is, is the Lord's program. That's the title he wants me to give it. If you are doing it as a Bible study or teaching other people, he may give you another title, but he has a message for someone today. And I believe that person is you. So please uh, don't stop watching. And don't forget, if you have to stop, uh, you can catch up on our YouTube channel later on where you have the opportunity to watch this video and all the other videos we've done. So let's read Esther chapter 1. Now it came to pass in the days of Aesuerus. This is he which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia over a hundred and seventy uh, over a hundred and seven um a hundred and twenty seven offenses that in those days when the king Asero sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants. The power of Persia and Media, the nobles and the princes of the prof of provinces before him. When he showed his riches of his glory, glorious kingdoms, and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even a hundred and forty. A hundred and um, a hun even a hundred and four score days, and when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the garden of king's palace. When where were white, green, and blue hangings, fasting with curls of fine linen and purple to silver rings and pillars of marble the beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble and they gave them drink in vessels of gold the vessels being diverse one from another and royal wine in abundance according to the state of the king and the drinking was according to uh, was according to the lord no none did compel for so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Okay. Also, Falchi the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house, which belonged to the king. And on the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehu and Bisa, Hapona, Bigad, Abgad, Seta, and Kakas, and seven chamberlains that served in the presence of in his presence, to bring Vachi the queen before the king with the royal with the crown royal to show the people, the princes, her beauty, for she was fair to look on very beautiful. But the king but the queen virtue refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. Then the king said to the wise men which knew the times. So was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment. And the next unto him was Shena, Sheta, Admata, Tashi, Meres, Masena, and Mimukan, and the seven princes of Pasha and Media, which saw the king's ways, and which sat the first in the kingdom. What shall we do unto the queen Vachi according to law? Because she had not performed the commandment of the king Azeros by the Chamblains. And Memukan answered before the king and princes, Vachi the queen had not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in all the prophecies of king Azeros. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women so that they shall despise their husband in their eyes when it shall be reported reported the king Aesiris commanded Vashi the queen to be brought in before him but she came not likewise shall all the ladies of Persia and Media say this day all unto all the king's princes 
which have heard of the deed of the king. Thus shall they arise to much content and rout. And if it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persian and Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashi come no more before king Aracerus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give their husband honor both to great and small. And, same, and the same pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Memucam. For he sent letters unto all the king's prophecies, into every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, there, there's something that I saw in the scripture as we were reading, and um, I have to stop because uh, I think it, it is key, is very important. But uh, let's let's start on this note. Uh, we said right there um, that we said that the title of this of our discussion today is don't give an occasion to the enemy to strike we it is good for us to look at what happened in this story uh, i mean the entire story is about the removal of the queen and uh but the lord showed me some things uh, which we need to pay attention to uh the first thing there is we want to look at the influence of why so the, the the key thing in this story is that whatsoever you do will affect other people so uh we need to be mindful of the consequence of our action you know whatsoever we do will eventually or may eventually affect other people we can take decisions that is going to have impact on other people so life isn't just all about us okay uh if you decide to move a house uh it's not just about you it could affect your wife, your children. It could affect so many of the other opportunities. Whatever we do is just good for us to reflect a little bit uh, before we take the final decision. So the first thing I want us to look at is uh, I wish <laughs> the Lord will allow me to deal with this topical issue about Christians uh, drinking alcohol. But um, <laughs> if you want me to talk about it, please just leave a comment at the bottom of this video and say brother Buki, can you go into it but i i've got an insight um uh, in the word of god so let's look at one scripture because the genesis of this old trouble was a celebration without the celebration queen virtue wouldn't have been removed without the celebration um the 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 king you know will not be drunk without this celebration i am not saying uh, something is wrong with uh, celebration. It's good for you to celebrate, to rejoice. But everything should be done in moderation. I mean, look at this man. Uh, the Bible says that he reigned from Asia right down to uh, Ethiopia. 127 provinces just for one man. And then the man decided to throw a face, you know. And then arrange all the princes to come one by one. I mean, there is no way. After some times, uh, you even need a strong drink for you to go through all this parade. There's no way he won't get into your head. Um, uh, one of the things that happen is you know, when we are celebrating, if we are not very careful, is that uh, there's a thin line between when you are celebrating and the thing now begin to get into your head, and you now think that it is by your own power. You know, Deuteronomy chapter 8, I believe, you know, Moses told the children of Israel, he said, look, um, when you get into the land and then you became very rich and then you get so many houses and good things, do not think it is by your own power, for it is the Lord who gives you the power to get well. Sometimes we get to that point where we think it's because of our performance that has gotten us some things or because of our qualification or because um of our status or whatever it is but it is not like that so 
in this case, I want us to see a scripture how these old things just started because it is good for us to look at it. So uh, the Bible says that the king gave an instruction, you know, that they should bring Queen Vachi, you know, and um, I want us to, I want us to, okay, I want us to read verse, um, uh, on verse 10, say, on the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine now you, you might not really get that um let me read another translation okay aha uh -huh. on the seventh day of the party the king was in high spirits from drinking wine there is something that uh wine will do for you wine will take you to another level <laughs> it will take you to a level where you don't want to be uh actually let's see the book of proverbs um <laughs> one scripture say um uh drink uh, i think he was paul writing to Tim timothy i think yes uh and he was saying drink a little wine for your health and i asked people i say look are you sick uh so he said drink a little wine for your health and you said D -d -d paul wrote that in the new testament but okay are you sick so why are you drinking when you're not sick okay uh <laughs> proverbs 31 verses here say uh, and then some people get into the discussion like okay uh the bible didn't say we should drink he just said that don't drink too much okay that's fine um <laughs> that's the portion of the bible that you have read god bless your heart but look at this proverbs chapter 36 verse 1 leaders can't afford to make fools of themselves gulping wine and swallowing beer okay uh less hung over they don't know right from wrong and the people who depend on them are hurt use wine and beer as use wine and beer only as sedatives to kill pain and dull the uh, the act of in of the terminally ill for whom life is a living death now um if you drink wine uh the bible says that something will happen to you or something can happen to you and it can lead to the hurt of other people this is what happened after this man was drunk he then sent for the queen now i read the commentary the notes and it says that is actually against the tradition of the passion to bring out their wife in the open that they don't usually do it they don't usually ask their wife uh, they don't ask their wife to come into the open. They prefer that they just stay. And I think probably we understand this as we go on later on, where you know a, a woman cannot just appear in the court of the king except he's except except she is invited. So that's their custom. But uh, the king threw away this custom uh, when he was drunk. You know. So that's the first thing I want us to see there is that you can throw caution to the wind under the influence of alcohol so it's important for us that uh and then and then and then you see what happened because you are under the influence because the king was under the influence of alcohol when the woman said look i'm not coming he wasn't sensible enough to know okay maybe that wasn't the first time i mean maybe that was the first time she was going to say that because all the other times you know when you call her she will answer you but that just one time <laughs> you treat caution to the wing, wind and then you begin to do all sorts of things so the topic today is don't give an occasion don't give an occasion to the enemy to strike um don't do things that will make the enemy use you as a weapon so that's the thing and wine is one of those things now let's now turn to queen vachi again uh the scripture says that what caused the problem what what uh, can you imagine let's say the man was you know he's not he's, he's no longer in his senses he's a foolish man i don't want to say that and but um as a woman if i mean the book of uh, uh the, the 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 book of peter uh the epistle of peter wasn't written as at that time but actually it wasn't written about that time but the apostle peter was writing about sarah and Abraham and about the conduct and uh, talking about uh, a believing wife have an un unbelieving woman talking about by your manner and your conversation you may win them over okay so Queen Vachi will have used wisdom 
uh well, i say okay fine you know but i've made my own party uh so why is the king sending for me why did he send for me against the tradition so in her wisdom she could have uh, sent the word to the to to to, to the king and say uh, his majesty look you are asking me to come i've got a party going on here and uh, i've got a lot of people and i'm actually throwing this party in your honor i'm not disobeying you um but uh your majesty please be reminded also that uh according to the tradition of the passion i mean you can send it uh, and then you, you can see actually you can see even see what happened we were not actually told what the servants of the king told queen vachi because all of them were drunk so you can imagine the the words in the because we were told that you know the king said that they should take off the rule i think you know uh, there's a rule that you know when you're on duty um you don't drink wine or you don't drink more than certain quantity quantity but the king himself took away you know the rule and said look uh, he said look you can drink as much as you want so the servants the people that he sent to the queen you know we don't actually know what they told her why why did she say she wasn't coming uh, it's possible that they've told her some kind of rubbish words that the queen said really you mean that the queen said that if that if that was what he said then i'm not coming you understand so uh, the wine the wine was the uh was the trigger here yeah, causing all kind of things so uh, uh the, the queen vachi will have said okay fine I, i'm not gonna give to this i, I mean i mean giving to this sorry I, i'm just going to uh be a honorable woman and that big brings me that brings me to the second point that i want to share with us today uh the bible says wives submit to your own husband okay women or women or wife or wife the scripture did not say you should submit to your pastor okay there's another scripture that says that uh uh we should submit to them that have rule over us you should submit one unto another but the scripture here says that you should submit to your own husband now let's see something that i saw in that uh scripture um very interesting mm. Uh, I, I'll show you the amplified version and uh, uh, you will see something there. I, I believe that is going to be a blessing to someone today. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22. I'm seeing that for the very first time. I mean, I know that scripture to heart, you know, but I haven't seen this translation. This is, is amplified Bible translation, not the classic one. Amplified said, wives be subject be submissive and adapt to yourself that's not what i want to talk about that's not what i want to talk about to your own husband as a service to the lord that's the point i want to bring out your submission to your own husband is as is a service unto the lord okay i'm going to say that again your submission to your own husband is a service unto the lord so when you are doing it they said submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the lord so let's look at what colossians chapter 3 verse 18 has to say say wives understand and support your husband by submitting to them in ways that honor the master the master they have been our lord jesus christ so when we are talking about submission submission isn't about the man that's the point i want to bring in so as a woman when you submit yourself to your husband it is not about the husband it is not about the man it's about the lord is about the lord the submission is about the lord you are doing it unto the lord you are doing it as a service and that's why uh, you know some of the things that we do if we don't have this understanding that uh, uh some of the scripture we are asked to fulfill we are not just doing it for people uh, we are doing it for the lord and the person that is going to reward us is not the person that we do the good deeds to is the lord who is going to reward us so it's, it's important that you know when, when we read some of this scripture is a is amazing he said uh, be submissive and adapt yourself so if queen Vachi have adapted herself i said look 
uh this man because uh, i think i think um yeah the, the the fact that somebody decide to mess up does not give you the liberty to be a partaker of their sin and uh, i mean as i'm just talking i just remember a story i think i believe probably it was it was in noah in the bible yes you know after the flood the man was you know the man was drunk and then he uncovered he uncovered his nakedness and you know, i mean the three children one of them when the other one covered uh his face and said look i will not behold the nakedness of my father and then the man woke up and then you know the rest is history in terms of he set the cause for their life you know how he made one to be the servant of the other so uh, we shouldn't say because somebody is wrong so too wrong doesn't make it right okay uh you can tell me and say oh but the man doesn't deserve my submission ah uh, okay okay your 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 boss in the office doesn't deserve your submission to you are only submitting because uh you know that you are not going to get paid at the end of the month so the person that you are submitting to is actually the money you are serving uh what's he called uh mammon <laughs> the, 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 is it the god of this world yes that's what you are serving you are not serving the lord because if you are serving the lord you will do what the lord says he said the bible says you should do it as a service unto the lord do it as you honor the master your worship of the master is incomplete without your submission to god wow Oh, I'm going to say that again. I, actually, I love to tweet that. Your worship of the master is incomplete without your submission to your husband. If you are married, the worship of your of the Lord, the worship of the Lord is incomplete until you have submitted to your own husband. So, and it's the same thing everywhere. If you are a child to your parent. Your worship of the Lord is incomplete until you submit unto your parents as unto the Lord. It's the same thing if you, if you, he said, uh, submit unto them that have rule over you. So your worship of the master, your worship of the Lord is incomplete until you are fully submitted to the constituted authority. So if you are giving your boss problem in the office and uh, <laughs> you are causing havoc you 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 are rebellious every little things you just go and then you just attack them your worship i don't care whether you pay your tithe every 15 days or uh, you even do 70 percent <laughs> instead of 10 percent you pray and fast for 21 days that worship is incomplete until you have submitted according to the word of the Lord. Isn't that amazing? So the last point that I want us to look at today is, please, uh, don't allow another person to judge in a matter that concerns you and your family members. Or uh, uh, don't, don't give the power, especially sometimes when we are asking for counsel be careful who you give the power to to put a mouth in the um, uh, to to put a mouth in the matter uh i know is a tradition in this case the king asks his advisor i said what shall be done uh to the queen uh, look the relationship between the queen and the king is a private matter uh she 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 was the queen you know and uh and an elevated position in the kingdom maybe the number two in command or something like that i don't know but uh, uh when it comes to the matter of um judging the queen and what she has done that is something that the king will have done now let's see the cancer that they gave the queen now immediately they gave the king they said look uh, this thing that the queen have done is not just about the queen i want you to know that is the same way look this is the same thing that all other women will do they will start disobeying their disobeying their husband and they'll begin to, that's what we look we ask you to talk about the queen okay why are you bringing other people into the matter that is what will happen when you ask somebody who have no business in the affairs of your family member or your private life 
people who have no business in it when you invite them to come and talk about it they will begin to tell you oh i remember that was something that happened in the family oh you got to be careful my friend you remember somebody's husband they will be telling you and the story that they are telling you is not exactly the same you know as the situation on hand so uh, uh, look in this particular instance that they were talking about they say that's the way all the women will disobey their husband in the first instance uh, they didn't throw any party their wife didn't throw party how many what's the statistics how many women have disobeyed their their uh, uh what they call have disobeyed their husband what gives them the impression that the women will follow queen vachi what gives them the impression that some other wives will say look we are we know what queen vachi did was wrong so we are not going to follow her so how come they they quickly came to the point that look uh, a judgment be passed to dethrone queen vachi here is what i want to end here is the way i want to put this to an end today all that happened so that the person God has ordained for the protection and the previous, uh, the protection and the preservation of his people might come on the throne. And we're going to see that in chapters that we are going to be reading from our next edition of the Mirror of the World. So I don't want you to miss it, please um join us as we do you can just uh, do what they call on, on facebook or youtube subscribe to our video and you will get an alert an alert once we are live i like to announce that as from 31st and in first of august i'm not going to be active on facebook as i used to be um the lord will want me to take some time off and um but I don't know most likely we will, you will see our video most likely we will still be doing live videos or it's just like if you put comments i may not respond to it we're going to be more active on twitter on youtube and possibly instagram so uh but please uh, go to our youtube page and subscribe so that every time we upload new video you will be able to watch it let's pray for those who are sick lord jesus i ask you that as many as are looking up to you today for healing, stretch forth your hands and heal them. Lord, send your word. I know once you send your word, they shall be made whole. Wherever they have, in different parts of the world, in their house, hospital bed, Lord, send your word right now into their body lord those who are sick in their heart those who are sick financially those who are sick emotionally lord send your word your word can cut through the bone marrow your word can cut through the heart and the soul send your word and let your word make them whole in jesus name lord i thank you for it i give you praise in jesus name we have prayed before i go i'd like to give someone the opportunity to become born again i want you to give your life to jesus i want you to make jesus your master and savior uh, one thing i can assure you of is that once you take that decision our lord jesus is going to come into your heart your spirit will become active you know it might look like nothing happened after saying that prayer, boy, it's a step of faith. The first step is you committing yourself into the hands of the Lord. And then once you say that prayer, your spirit man becomes alive under the spirit of God, the realm of the spirit. And Jesus will come in with the spirit of God and the Father and they will begin to dwell in you. So if you want Jesus Christ to be your Lord and to be your Savior, I want you to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I confess that I am a sinner. I repent of my sins today. I believe you died for me so I can have eternal life. I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for saying that prayer. I want you to um, see our email address below. I want you to get in touch with us. We want to send some book materials to you that is going to 
help you grow spiritually. May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our Master Jesus Christ, the one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he would do it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, we have prayer meeting on Tuesday, Bible study on Friday. And on Sunday, we meet at Luton. So if you are in Luton, Bedfordshire, Emir Herbstead, Milton Keynes, Hallo, all those area, Edgeware, Watford, North London, uh, you can join us at Luton 9 to 11, 15, you know, and then we have fellowship afterwards. We have Bible study at all the services and we also have communion. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.